Yes, yeah, sir. Uh, my name is Eric Wiley. I'm here with the local papers from Journal. Journal. Um, my first question would be, this is your first time speaking in Kansas? Um, after having a first time in Salinas, but the Kansas of them. I'm old. I've been to all the states. <laughs> so you're familiar with Salina being the hometown of Marlon Fitzwater? Only because I read it in the chamber. You know Marlon, right? I know who he is. I never met him. Really? I didn't used to cover politics, so we traveled in different circles. I hate politics. <laughs> hate politics or hate politicians? <laughs> Both. Most of them, anyway. I mean, the idea that these people spend all their time pandering and sucking up for money just so they can rule over us some of them want to do good, yes, but I find most are very narcissistic, power mad, shallow people. How do we, how do we govern without politicians? We need politicians to govern and they need to run for office, but if government were smaller and didn't control so much of our lives, then we could make more choices for what we wanted and wouldn't have to ask government permission. Can you elaborate well, on that? Yeah. That's, that's, I mean, that's a very broad statement. Um, look, you obviously are not in the manufacturing business. Yeah. Don't try to build an addition to your house or build a new house. Or look at companies like Uber. Do you have Uber in Salinas? Uh, Salina? No, I don't believe it. I think it's coming. Is it coming? Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't right. think it's here yet. So, I live in Manhattan. Right. And it is, Uber is just obviously superior to taxis. The cars are cleaner, it's easier to have a conversation with the person. You rate them on your phone so you're safer. It's, it's obviously better and yet and it was so obviously better they got to have billions of dollars in investment money so they had enough money that by the time the politicians woke up and noticed the successful business they had money and a million customers and they could fight off all the regulators who said you can't do that you have to have a certain kind of car you have to pay us you have to kiss our rent and they've been able to back them off and most places keep growing. But if you're building a chemical plant or a pharmaceutical plant, every year they add new layers of rules that all of them have safety and fairness and protecting us. But that's why we have economic growth. It's a fraction of what it used to be after recessions. Well, I think it's because people are under the, the, the people at the top 1% are earning more but it hasn't trickled down to the rest of us. And since we don't have more disposable income because of flat uh, wages, which have been flat for 30 years. How many years? 30, since, since about 82. Well, over 40 years, they're up 40%, so that would mean they did all the growing in the first 10. But mm, the rich have gotten much richer, that's true. Yes. But you sound like a... Bernie Sanders socialist. I think that well, you talk about it. Why would you have to resort to an ad hominem attack? Is that an attack? I think it's an attack. You, interpreting you, you, your no, you, question. You, you said I'm a Bernie Sanders socialist like that's a dirty thing. I, that's dismissive. Me. And that's dismissive. And that's an ad hominem attack. I mean, that's, that's, that's public speaking 101. I'm trying to have a debate or a discussion and you instead attack me. Too bad. That's Too bad? bad? Yeah. That's my so impression. So when did you stop being a reporter? I'm both a reporter and a person with opinions. I, I have always been. I grew up watching you on 2020, and I, I enjoyed your pieces then. And I think you had some objectivity at that point, but I think you kind of misplaced it. I learned some things. I learned economics, and when people say things a like what, of it. pardon? A version of it, one approved by Milton Friedman. Yes, Milton would approve. And 
uh, in my opinion, the nature of your comments lead me to think that you're ignorant about economics. And since that's one of the most important things when it comes to people's welfare, I'm quite happy to say it. I think you sound like a Bernie Sanders economically ignorant person. You don't even let me answer your question. Oh, no, I did. I think I did. No, I don't think so. You said you, you, trickle down hasn't worked. You, you. I never said trickle down hasn't worked. It didn't trickle down to the rest of us were your words. Doesn't that mean it no, doesn't? I didn't say, I never used the words trickle down. Well, we have Do I have any witnesses? <laughs> we have it on tape. I, I didn't say it. it, it you didn't say trickle down? No. Okay. Whether you did or not, you said the rich got richer and everybody else has been stagnant. Yes. In, in, in regards to inflation, yes. That's the economic, it, the recovery hasn't been as strong or robust because most people don't have as much take home pay to spend on other goods which would increase manufacturing. So you need more people, you need people to buy things who can afford to buy things. And most True. people can't afford beyond rent, utilities, groceries, gasoline, and very little less. Left. A lot of them cannot, that's true. But you're describing slow growth and saying slow growth has happened because of slow growth. That's sort of nonsensical. I'm saying slow growth, is, that there's been a phenomenal growth in wages at the top. But it hasn't, and I will use the term now, it has not come down to the rest of us. But even bigger growth in wealth at the top. It's not so much wages, it's often stock it's, gain. it's taxed at a lower rate. The, the wealthy can invest and are taxed at a lesser rate than we are. Warren Buffett has said as much. Do you dismiss Warren Buffett? He pays less than his secretary in terms well, of a portion you, of his taxes. Throw out a lot of liber a lot of leftist cliches. How is that a Which cliche? one should That's I address? I'm quoting Warren Buffett directly. That's not Fine. a cliche. Can I That's a fact. Can he I has respond? made that statement. Sure. You sure? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, it's true. Warren pays less than his secretary. But Warren takes his money in capital gains. That's a lower rate. He uses lots of deductions. His secretary doesn't take many deductions. She makes between two hundred and four hundred thousand dollars So she's at the top bracket, and she's paying the top bracket. So of course she pays more. What does that prove? Well, that the, that the wealthy can't afford to lobby Congress, have the tax codes changed so that the capital gains tax is lowered, that's what. That's the effect. That's what they've done. Is that not a fact that they haven't lobbied for this? No, everybody lobbies. They no, certainly. I don't lobby. Do you? Anybody in this room ever lobby? Congress? Good, good, good point. Every interest group, as government grows, can people spend more in politics and more people lobby to get what they want, uh, which is a real problem. And that's why I argue you should keep government to what the founders had intended to keep us safe. And otherwise, let people do everything, anything that's peaceful. No subsidies for anybody. Uh, the capital gains rates have gone down. Have gone, Obama raised them. But you talk as if the rich getting super rich is at the expense of the poor. If you include all the data, which is government transfers after tax income, and if you look at the consumer spending numbers, yeah, the rich have gone way up. But I say, so frickin' what? If the poor have gone up too, and they have, and I would much rather live in a country where the rich get rich and the poor get rich than a socialist country where everybody's poor. Well, Bernie Sanders isn't a socialist. He's a democratic socialist, which is akin to most of what is Western Europe. He's democratic socialist, not socialist. So there's a big difference between the two. Sometimes he calls and himself a socialist. And how much growth has there been in Western Europe? What has Western Europe invented in the last 50 years? How high is teen unemployment, is youth unemployment in Western Europe? I think it depends on which country you're talking about. But here in Kansas, when the uh, Koch brothers and others lobbied to eliminate the personal income tax on small business owners, with which the Koch brothers somehow managed to qualify for because if they're a privately held organization, the rest of us are having to pay more in taxes and other services. Our services are being cut. The poor are being affected here. 
uh, Medicaid services are being restricted. Uh, school funding is being lowered despite Supreme Court ruling saying that they need to increase it uh, based on our Constitution here in Kansas. So the poor are being affected by tax cuts for the wealthy that aren't employing more people. These people didn't you know, go out, the farmers and other small business owners didn't need to hire any more people because they got a tax cut. That was the big plan here in Texas, or sorry, Kansas, according to they the governor. They didn't Brown need that. to hire more people because they got a tax cut? That the impetus was that they would, the, the reasoning that Brownback and the Republican legislature here cut taxes was they said, well, then hire more people will attract more businesses. In fact, more businesses are going across the border to Missouri instead of staying here because the other things that were cut as a result of this, like school funding and other things, aren't attracted to people with businesses because they want their kids to be educated well. So the small farmer, or the quote small farmer here, the big farmers here in Kansas who got tax cuts, they didn't have to hire anybody else. So there was no there was no economic impetus other than to just cut taxes for the wealthy. Well, I haven't studied Kansas uh, in the recent changes enough to intelligently answer your rant, but um, based on everything else you said, I'm skeptical. Okay. Look into it, please. Sure. Any, anybody else <laughs> want to join the conversation? <laughs> yeah, I'm, um, I'll focus more on the presidential candidates and their races in the upcoming caucus next month in Kansas. Um, I know you. Can, I've read some, a few columns you've written, or opinion columns you've written, just about um, the Iowa caucus and how some of the candidates were sort of, you know, saying whatever or agreeing with all the mandates. I, I guess involving ethanol, um, just in an effort to win votes in Iowa. Um, what were some of the points or areas you think the candidates were focus in Kansas to try to win those votes? Uh, is Again, I would think the ethanol mandate is popular in Kansas too, or I don't know. It's disgusting. The idea that one industry would get a special subsidy to produce a fuel that was once thought to be less polluting, but isn't, and even the environmental groups agree with that now, and even Al Gore admits he made a mistake on that, that there should be a level playing field. No one should get subsidies also makes food cost more, and that hurts poor people. And to get enough, grow enough corn in America to replace oil, you'd have to cover all of America plus 20%. So it uses a lot of land to make corn. And now natural gas has made energy much cheaper. And the idea of being energy independent is mostly nonsense partly because of the tracking discoveries, and also because trade is OK. Uh, if, if it's not even true that we get our oil from the Middle East. Most of it, the imported oil, comes from Mexico and Canada. And I don't think they're likely to cut us off. When goods cross, are free to cross borders, armies are less likely to. Going back on the presidential race, I don't know, and as I say, I don't like politics. And uh, as Fox, they always want me to speculate, and uh, I piss people off by saying, "Gee, I don't, know. I don't, can't predict the future." That the most reliable guide to what will happen is not pundits and not the polls, even. It's the betting because people who put their money where their mouth is care more about being right and are less likely to delude themselves. Do you think Edinburgh's going to come into the race? Maybe. But the betting markets say Hillary is going to be president. Uh, she's almost certainly going to be the Democratic nominee, and she's likely to be president. And on the Republican side, it's, I have to look it up quickly again, but uh, I can, the betting is illegal in America because foolish Republicans mostly banned these prediction markets. They've allowed a small one called predicted.com. But the biggest one is called Betfair in London, since Americans are not allowed to bet. 
and at electionbettingodds.com, my producer and I have converted it to percentages that you can understand. As of five minutes ago, um, wow, Rubio is up to 58%, Trump's down to 22%, then Cruz at 12, Bush at 5. For the Republican nomination. For the Republican nomination. For the presidency, Hillary's at 50 and Rubio is way down at, I mean, he's next at, press the wrong button there. But this is another example of innovation that happened in the part of the country farthest from Washington, D.C., San Francisco and Seattle. Seattle. And the regulators didn't even know about it enough to cripple it. Uh, for President Hillary, 50.4%, Rubio, 24.1%. Sanders, 8%, Trump, 7%. And historically, that the betting's been the most reliable guide. European prediction markets predicted Oscar winners, American Idol What's winners. What's Dick Morris say the prediction's going to be? <laughs> I don't know. I think he's, I haven't heard a peep from him since he was so wrong last time. You ask me what Europeans have done better than we have. Um, they, their cell phone rates are much cheaper than ours because um, you can walk into a 7-Eleven. The Europeans have much better cell phone costs than we do because the companies here have lobbied Congress, spent their dollars to make sure that you can't change the chip in your phone. You don't phone own calls are practically free. No, I'm talking about the fees that you pay to be able to access those networks. And that you're, what, what company do you have that phone with? You might ask. Verizon, the, uh, U.S. Cellular. AT&T. AT&T. You can't rechip that phone to a Verizon phone or another company like you can in Europe. You can walk into a 7-Eleven or a magazine stand on the corner, <coughs> buy a chip, rechip your phone. You're specifically we're, we're barred from that in this country. It's illegal to do that. It sounds like paradise, but my impression is that Europe is wonderful. They have a homogeneous population. They've been rich for a long time. Now they're kind of like a wine and cheese museum. There's no job growth, and maybe their phone services are cheaper, but they sure don't come up with the next Uber. They sure don't invent the phones. Nokia was the last one, I think. And the innovation comes from the free countries, which is not the United States so much anymore. It's more. Hong Kong, Australia, New Zealand, Canada is freer on the economic index, but most of the really cool innovation, like Facebook, Google, that's made our lives better, comes from Europeans who felt stifled by the bureaucracies there. Look at the guys who started Google. Uh, they left Europe. Uh, the semiconductor makers, a lot of them are Europeans who just felt that they couldn't innovate there in your better place. I, no, you didn't. I didn't say it was a better place. I just said it was one of the things that they do better. You implied it's a better place. One of the place. things they do better is what I said. Anybody else have a question? Any more? All right. Well, thank you very much.